guys welcome back to my channel did you miss me i know well i hope you don't mind but today's video is gonna be a little bit different i'm basically just gonna be talking about a topic that really really fascinates me and I think about it a lot and that is the I'm not like other girls slash pick me slash internalized misogyny that is going on well has been going on for a long time I got this idea after watching Jordan Teresa's video on bimbification where she touches on the subject a little bit she also has other videos on the not like other girls thing I highly recommend her channel I love her videos and I also just want to say that there are a lot of other videos on this topic and topics like this on YouTube so this isn't really anything new or revolutionary but I feel like I have a lot to say about it so I just I want to talk about it okay so I feel very strongly about this and another reason is because I much like many other girls used to be not like the other girls so embarrassing. I'm not proud of it and thankfully I grew out of that phase and now literally nothing annoys me more than when girls act like this. But listen, if you claim you never went through that phase, you're probably lying. So many of us are guilty of having this mindset at some point in our lives and if you're in it right now, you definitely need to watch this video. And I'm gonna link more videos down below for you to watch if you're interested in this topic, but yeah i guess we can just get started now so if you don't know what not like the other girls is <laughs> it's basically a girl who thinks she's special because she's different than normal or like basic girls and isn't interested in like typical girl things and that can include anything from wearing makeup dressing cute getting Starbucks, wearing Uggs was a huge basic girl thing at the time, stuff like that. And a not like the other girls girl usually looks down on that type of behavior and thinks she's better than it. And now there are tons of people calling it out, thankfully, and for good reason. But back in the day, like when I was in middle school and high school, people kind of looked at it as a good thing. There used to be all these memes about like other girls versus me and like the other girl had like blonde hair and she listened to popular music and like me had like black hair and listened to alternative music and read books and like wore sweatpants. You know the ones I'm talking about. Now there's just like a bunch of making fun of that, people making new ones to make those girls like be friends. It's very wholesome and cute. And I'm glad that this behavior is finally getting called out. It can also be classified as a pick-me girl, but that's a little bit different and I'm gonna get into that later. Just a warning, I'm gonna be using air quotes like so much in this video because I just, it, it calls for it, okay? I can't not. Um, but yeah, getting into my history with being not like the other girls. I had it bad, you guys. Okay, so it kind of started for me in middle school but the height of it was in high school for sure. To me, for some reason, being basic was like literally the worst insult anyone could ever give you. I despised being basic, like I wanted no part of it. And being basic meant like what I described earlier, just being like a typical girl, dressing cute, wearing makeup. I mean, I did wear makeup, I'll get into that, but. <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't want to be basic. And I think it's because society conditioned us to believe that a girl who's different from other girls is somehow better. And Jordan made a point in one of her videos that the main character in movies and books and TV shows was always like this different girl. She didn't wear makeup. She was all natural. She didn't want to go shopping. She wanted to read books. She wasn't boy crazy, but somehow the boys gravitated towards her because she was just so effortlessly perfect. And to me and a lot of other girls my age, this became like the ideal girl to be. And I'm not saying that The Hunger Games and Divergent and all those other dystopian YA novels were not iconic because they were, but I think they definitely had a part in this. And 
my love of reading combined with always wearing black combined with me being insanely shy and not in the slightest popular at school at all it was a recipe for disaster because I truly believed that to be special you had to be different because I was different but like that didn't make me any better or worse than the other girls. I was easily influenced by what I was watching and what I was reading. I was reading like a book a week with all these main female protagonists who were different. Does this make me a bad person? No, I was young and impressionable and luckily I learned from that time in my life and I now know that that mindset was so completely wrong. I wasn't outwardly being mean to other girls or like calling them out or anything, but in my head I was like, Oh my god, the popular girls are like so materialistic, like... <laughs> They shop at Hollister and they go to Starbucks. Like, I didn't go to Starbucks. I did. And I didn't know them at all. Like, I was just thinking these things. I just assumed these things. And they were just people with lives just as complex as my own. But God forbid they wear Uggs and listen to Justin Bieber. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that brings me to another example. <laughs> from my past. In middle school, all the girls were like obsessed with Justin Bieber and for that reason, I hated him. Like I literally hated Justin Bieber <laughs> because he was so popular and all the other girls loved him. I was like, oh no, I have to be different. I can't be like everyone else. So I have to hate Justin Bieber. And listen, he was annoying. Um, he definitely didn't make the best decisions, but I had no reason to hate him as much as I did. And same thing with One Direction, when they started getting super popular and like all the girls loved them, I was like, okay, no, I can't like them because I'm different. <laughs> so stupid. And at the time, I was listening to artists like Lana Del Rey, Marina and the Diamonds, Melanie Martinez. You get the point. I was that girl. I still love them though. Thank God I never hated Taylor Swift though. Oh my God. I always loved her and I'm still the biggest Swifty to this day, okay? Now in high school, I did wear makeup and I did put effort into my outfits, but it was more in like an emo weird way. <laughs> I don't have pictures and I'm not gonna put any in this video because it's just awful. I would wear black eyeshadow and black eyeliner every single day. Like, oh my God, it was hideous. I just want to say that being emo, doing your makeup like that and dressing like that is completely fine, but the way I did it was just particularly <laughs> not cute. I'd wear platform boots, black skirts, tights. I was dyeing my hair darker in high school. A part of me wishes I had just followed the trends because some of the outfits I wore, just no love, no. That was my emo phase. That's not really the point of this video, but like, it made me different, you know what I mean? So that's kind of my history with being not like the other girls. I completely bought into that mindset and I thought it was the way to be. I thought I was so cool on the inside. I mean, I knew I wasn't actually cool, but that's what made me cool. <laughs> and I had like four friends. And now to state the obvious, I am an extreme girly girl like I am a typical basic girl and I do basic girl things <laughs> I wear makeup every day I dress in girly cute outfits I put a lot of effort into my appearance does that make me shallow or materialistic no but some people think it does obviously there's more to me than my appearance but there's no harm in wanting to look good and if a girl doesn't wear makeup that's fine too as long as she's not putting other girls down who do like to wear makeup. You know, that goes for everything else too. It just blows my mind the way some people act. So now I want to touch on what a pick me girl is. It's kind of like the modern version of a not like the other girls girl, but it's a little bit different and a lot worse in my opinion. Now this type of girl has always been around, but recently it's kind of come back in different ways, which is why I said modern. So a pick me girl is a girl who tries to get male attention by putting down other girls. She'll say things like, oh, I never wear makeup. You wear so much makeup. Like I could never do that. 
Or, I only hang out with boys because girls are just so much drama. Or, she'll criticize women for getting work done on their bodies when she's all natural. You get the idea. One of my other favorite YouTubers, Casey Ayonzo, recently made a video about this. And it's basically about, like, pick me girls on TikTok. It's just so infuriating because we left this behind. Like, we grew out of it, we're better people now, and now there are these girls on TikTok, young girls, being pick me's. There's this trend that's like, introduce yourself as the reason why other girls hate you, first of all. And they're all like, hi, I'm all natural, or hi, I only hang out with guys, or hi, all their boyfriends want to be with me instead of them. Like, girl, stop. I thought we were past this. And there's nothing wrong with being all natural or having all guy friends, just as long as you shut up about it. <laughs> I'm kidding. But seriously, just as long as you don't like shame other girls for not being those things, you know what I mean? Basically the trend just radiates pick me girl energy. And I just want to say that I would not characterize what I was as a pick me because <laughs> I literally did not talk to boys until college. Boys didn't talk to me, like, it wasn't a factor. Of course I had crushes, but like, I never talked to them or anything, like, it was just from afar. But yeah, I would not say that I was a pick-me, but I definitely was a not-like-the-other-girls girl. And thankfully, that kind of behavior is getting called out more now than ever because people realize it's just stupid to think that way. I very strongly believe now that People can do whatever they want as long as it's not harming anyone. I never judge. Like, I literally do not care what people do as long as it makes them happy and it's not harming anyone. Like, if a girl wants to get filler, a boob job, a nose job, injections, Botox, dye her hair, wear cute clothes, like, who cares? If it makes her feel confident and beautiful, like, she should do it. <laughs> And I don't understand why people care so much when it has nothing to do with them. Like, d did someone ask you? It just makes me so mad. It costs zero dollars to just move on and not make a mean comment. You can think whatever you want to think, but like, why are you just gonna ruin someone's day because they're doing something that you don't like? Do you realize that makes no sense? No sense, love. People will pick apart a picture of a celebrity and be like, oh my god, I think she got something done, like, she looks so different, like, okay. And? Like, why is it a bad thing? Why is it bothering you so much? Women get hated on so much more than men do, and if you don't think that's true, then you are lying to yourself. For example, here on YouTube, go to any good male YouTuber's comment section and you'll see nothing but sweet, supportive comments from their fans, just like genuinely nice things. And they deserve it, they're great YouTubers, they're great people, and they should get those comments. But go to a girl's YouTube who has just as good content, and <laughs> sure there will be nice comments, but there's also just mean, nasty things, people picking apart like every little thing about her, her appearance, her personality, the way she talks, like things she can't even control. It's just disgusting. And I'm not just saying that because I get mean comments. You can see it everywhere. Like it's so painfully clear. And of course it's not just YouTube. I see this all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you name it, it is everywhere in the comment sections. The other day I was on Instagram and there was a video of this girl from that chess show, The Queen's Gambit. I've never watched it, but the main character, she's a girl, she's very beautiful. And it was like a video of an interview, I think. And the caption was like, she's so beautiful or something like that. And there weren't that many comments, but they were like, No, she isn't. No, she's not. Like, what? <laughs> If she's not beautiful, then who is? You can have your personal opinion, but if you say it out loud to me, it's just like you're trying to be a contrarian, which annoys me so much because I used to be that way too. I know what they're thinking, I'm in their heads. So infuriating. <laughs> People will just hate on girls for literally anything they do. Like, if a girl likes something that's popular or mainstream, she's basic. If she doesn't, then she's weird. If she wears makeup and dresses up, she's trying too hard. And if she doesn't, she's not 
making herself look presentable. We can't win, so we might as well just do whatever we want. Somebody's always going to be mad for no reason. And of course, I'm not saying all girls are perfect and should never be criticized. Nobody is perfect. Obviously, if someone needs to be called out, they should be called out. But in a way that's constructive and helpful, not cruel or mean or bringing someone's appearance into it or something they can't control. Because that happens a lot too, instead of just looking at what the person actually did wrong. People will say the most vile things because they think they're anonymous and they can get away with it. And the sad part is, a lot of the times they can get away with it. There are no consequences. And a lot of times, unfortunately, it is women hating on other women. Don't get me wrong, men say the most awful, disgusting things too. But girls will just tear down other girls for no other reason than bitterness and jealousy. I mean, we've seen it happen over and over and over. Taking Taylor Swift as a very famous example of this, she dated a lot of guys throughout her career. She had a lot of breakups, she wrote a lot of songs, amazing songs, <laughs> might I add. And people hated her for it. Like, what? That's literally what every artist does. Not even every artist, every person. We date around until we find the one we want to be with. Like, why is she going to stay in a relationship if she's unhappy. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying she's perfect. Of course she's made mistakes. Everybody has. Like imagine having that level of fame. She was and is so insanely famous and every relationship she had was just highly publicized for everyone to comment on. Imagine everyone just like giving their opinion on everything you do even though you didn't ask for it. Like. I mean, I know that's fame, but I would never want that level of fame. But when a male celebrity has a lot of girlfriends, like, nobody says anything. And Taylor gave us red. She gave us reputation. Something good definitely came out of it, but I know she had to be suffering for a lot of that time. Like, I cannot even imagine. And even though this is getting talked about more and more, it's still a huge issue. And unfortunately, I don't see it going away anytime soon because... There are just always going to be people out there who think they are speaking facts when really all they're doing is just putting other people down and making themselves look dumb. The progress is being made, but there is still more work to be done, of course. And that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm sure I left a bunch of stuff out. Maybe I'll add some stuff while I'm editing. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for clicking. You didn't have to, so that was like really nice or whatever. Please like and subscribe if you want to. No pressure. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.